Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Valen Rook. Thanks for your support, Valen. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Phoenix Point Packer Build 5, as we once again continue exploring this mist covered wasteland. Now, as usual, this is just an alpha. There's a lot of new content to explore, but there are also bugs, placeholders, and nothing's really been optimized just yet. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, let's get back to it. Now, first up, we need to get some new research queued, so... Haven Trade Protocols. Some trade between havens occurs, but it is a difficult and dangerous process. With our access to transportation, we are in a unique position to assist the different settlements by providing supplies. This might be a perfect opportunity to establish trade relations that would benefit all sides. Viral Mist The Viral Mist we have encountered in battle, and which played a decisive role in the downfall of the Old Order, is a phenomenon that urgently requires further study. Yeah, that does sound pretty important. Okay, I think we're good. Let's try heading east this time. We've got a pretty big landmass out here. Abandoned military base. Okay, let's see what we've got. Nice. A pretty modest resource boost. We can definitely use it. Ah, here we go. The Fire Within. At the Disciples of Anu Haven of Sarisha, a mutated worm infestation is causing serious problems. The locals had placed their hopes in Taxiarch Nergal, the Disciple's greatest military hero, but Nergal is said to be fighting a series of pitched battles against the Pandorans and has been unable to help. We could eradicate the infestation ourselves, helping the Haven and creating a good first impression with this faction. Okay, yeah. I don't know if we'll actually ally with the Disciples, but... I would like to get my hands on that mutation tack. Let's do this. I think we're ready, but let's double check just to be safe. Ah, let's move that med kit into our ready slot. All right, here we go. And here we are, on our first Disciple map. Though this is more of an independent scrapyard map than an actual Disciple map. It's also a lot more claustrophobic than usual. Lots of places for little enemies to hide. Let's get Mark up onto higher ground. See if he can uh, scout out the battlefield for us. I see them. Oh my goodness. More threats. And they were not kidding about that infestation. Alright, every one of these things is basically a crawling hand grenade, so. Got it. Let's set up a proper firing line here. I don't think they can get past this conveyor belt, so. We'll focus most of our attention over here. But we'll also have to keep an eye on those buildings. Uh, 
Let's go. On my way. Hmm. Actually, we don't want to block Chris's line of fire. I'm going. We'll use a narrower cone here, just so he doesn't accidentally clip one of his teammates. Holding position. Nice, that's one down. Too. All right, um, these things are going to overwhelm us if we just rely on Overwatch, so we'll have to be a little more proactive here. like that they're swarming towards the conveyor belt here. I don't think they can climb over it, but let's back off just in case. Roger. Threat eliminated. Confirmed. Moving. Man, it's a shame we don't have that grenade launcher yet. It would be perfect for a fight like this one. Oh, okay. Target down. Wow, I'm glad we pulled Fox back. That would have been a disaster. All right, let's get this under control here. Engaging. Threat eliminated. Thank you, Mark. I'm listening. Instructions received.
Roger. Got you covered. Oh, shoot. Ah! Well then. Target down. Yikes. Got a little careless with Fox there, but fortunately the fight ended before he could start taking too much burning damage. Andy got a level up for his trouble. Valen, too. Not bad. In Fire Message from Taxiarch Nergal to Phoenix Project Normally, when we encounter a potential ally, we first send the Apostle to the Onceborn to check them out, but I'm going to break protocol to say thanks. Now listen, I'll be honest with you. The Exalted is the only one who has any real answers. Tobias West may be clever, and Sinedrion may sound great, but only the Exalted is dealing with the world as it actually is. She can lead us out of this mess, give us lives worth living. Well, I do have some doubts, but we'd like to know more. If you want to work with us, you'll still have to deal with the hierarchy. Work your way up from the Apostle to the Onceborn, to the Keeper of the Threshold, all the way up to the Synod of Yearning and the Exalted herself. That's hard work. You'll have to earn the knowledge you gain. But trust me, it'll be worth it. And if the Synod gives you trouble, let me know. <laughs> Duly noted. Thank you. Okay, so we have now made contact with two of the main in-game factions. We seem to be on pretty good terms with them. And uh, they also seem to be tolerating each other, at least for now. I'm sure that'll change given time. Ooh, looks like they've got a potential recruit too. Let's have a look. Alright, looks like a Disciple Assault. I guess we could use another Assault. That price is actually pretty reasonable. I think we paid 500 for Chris. Haven Trade Protocols We have established a series of diplomatic protocols for trading with havens. While many settlements may have needs that we could meet, the sad truth is that in today's atmosphere of fear and paranoia, we will have to establish good relations with the haven's leadership and show that we're not potential swindlers or raiders before they will consider engaging in trade with us. Good to know. Oh, let's set up diplomatic relations with the Disciples, too. Disciples of Anu Said to have been a series of cultist sects before the Third World War, the Disciples of Anu have grown to become one of the greatest powers in what is left of our world. Not much is known about their religion other than that they embrace the mutations brought by the Pandora virus and are ruled by a leader referred to only as the Exalted. I actually really like the fact that they integrated some of the original Crab Queen concept art into the Exalted's design. It's nice to see some of the original concept art still making it into the game, even if it is for a completely different purpose than originally intended. Anyway, let's grab that assault and then we'll start heading south. It is important to remember that the relative cost of a new recruit will be weighted by the population and overall prosperity of a haven. And there we have it, our very first disciple recruit, even if it is just a normal assault. 
On the bright side, that does get us a full set of Disciple Assault gear, including their very distinctive Reaper Rotary Shotgun. That's a pretty fun and powerful weapon, but we will have to manage our ammo carefully. We can't actually manufacture that just yet. As for her perks... It looks like we've got another Assault who's destined to dual class with Heavy. I can live with that. As for her name, I believe the next suitable recruit we have on the waiting list is... Yumi Weihunt. I'll have to double check to make sure I spelled that right, but for now, welcome aboard, Yumi. Let's get back to it. Oh, actually, we've got a couple of level ups to take care of. Alright, so Valen hits level 2. That means he gets Dash. We also do want to pick up these heavy weapon related perks, but we won't worry about that until he hits level 4. For now, we'll just boost his speed and willpower. Then we've got Fox, who of course will get return fire. And again, we'll just boost his attributes. You know what, now that we've got people stationed back at the base, let's go ahead and build a training facility. This is another pretty basic facility. Basically, any soldier you station at a base with a training facility will slowly gain XP over time. It's not as much as they'd get for actively going on field missions, but it will help prevent them from falling too far behind. It's also a great way to train up new recruits if you don't want to put them at risk. Hey, nice. We could certainly use some more materials. But we might not want to go in there at night. We are just a few hours till dawn, so let's uh, push the clock forward a bit. Cue the sun. Okay, let's get that new grenade launcher equipped. We're pretty tight on supplies, but we will be finding some in just a moment. Generally speaking, the grenade launcher is pretty fantastic, but it's also something you really need to use sparingly. Those ammo drums are pretty expensive. To put it into perspective, they're about three to four times as expensive as most other ammo. That's material you could be using for things like new recruits or upgrades. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Okay, a little on the larger side. Lots of buildings for aliens to hide in. I think the first thing we need to do is take the high ground. Yes? Nothing in sight. Okay. 
There we go. We've got two crab men and a mist sentinel. Looks like heavy brawlers. Shield and pincer mutations. Nothing we have to worry about as long as they don't get too close. Nothing will get past me. Taking point. Let's go. You do want to be careful about positioning and overwatch cones. It's rare, but you can end up shooting your squad mates in the back. We'll have to keep an eye on that thing. Interesting. I do like how that crab man changed his direction as soon as he spotted our soldiers. Okay. I think we're in a pretty good spot here. Let's hunker down and start picking these guys off. In fact, let's start things off with a grenade. I really like that the explosions in Phoenix Point are directional. You'll notice that the Crab Man here only really took damage to the side that was facing the explosion. You'll also notice he didn't really take much damage to the armored parts of his body. Grenades are great for trimming off weapons and limbs, but they're not so great when you're up against some of the armored powerhouses that show up later in the campaign. Let's see what we can do about this guy behind the dumpster here. Shake it, baby. Nice. Thanks, Yumi. Shake it, baby. Inside. At this point, we really just have to pick off anyone who gets too close. Thing. I guess we could start chopping down the Mist Sentinel. 
It's not much of a threat, but it is a bit of an annoyance. Shake it, baby. There we go. Yeah, okay. I think we're pretty much done here. Let's do this. Not a problem. Just give the word. Well, I guess that works. On the move. Hmm. Let's save Mark for the mind fragger. Very nice. That's a full sweep on the resource containers and four level ups. Very strong showing from Chris and Yumi. Not much in the way of loot, though we did get some new Jericho leggings. That stuff is generally less mobile and less stealthy, but has much higher armor. It might be worth upgrading at some point. Alright, that gets us back in the black. Not by much, but it'll keep us going for a little while. Now, we are starting to get a bit tired out, so we should uh, pass some time back at base. Before we do, though, let's get another scan started. That way we'll have a whole batch of new locations to explore once we're done resting. Oh, hey, they've got a new recruit. Actually, I think that's the one we already saw. Yeah, that one is new. We do have one more open slot, but I think we'll hold out for a sniper. We've already got plenty of assaults and heavies. Okay, so Mark just hit level four. Based on his perks, I think we're going to cross-class him with Assault. That extra mobility and flexibility will really help him on the battlefield. 
He'll grab dash and return fire. And I guess we'll boost his willpower too. He'll need that extra will if we want him to dash on a regular basis. Next we've got Valen, and he gets Return Fire, and shores up his stats a bit. Chris is up a level, which means Extreme Focus. And we'll put the rest of his points into speed. Snipers are already slow, but he's also got that new Jericho armor weighing him down. As for Yumi, well, she is likely to become an assault-heavy hybrid, but we'll just stick with the basics for now. And now we wait. Viral Mist The Viral Mist is an extremely unusual phenomenon. It is, in fact, a highly complex aerosol, capable of moving with deliberation and transporting viral DNA and other microbes. It is our belief that the vast waves of mist that helped cause the destruction of civilization were generated underwater by gigantic mutated structures. Each wave, including the current one, referred to by the population as the Third Mist, has slightly different properties. Based on field reports, the mist interacts with any flora or fauna it comes into contact with. Prolonged exposure causes anxiety and even hallucinations. Most havens have defenses against its encroachment, but many Pandorans are capable of generating concentrated blooms of mist in combat. While the mist is opaque to human eyes and sensor equipment, Pandorans seem capable of seeing through it and are able to detect any entity it touches, suggesting that the mist actually relays information. It also seems to have a restorative effect on Pandoran creatures enveloped by it. Very interesting. I mean, we already knew most of that from the fiction, but it's something else to see it all grouped together like that. Hmm... Pandoran Spawnery Relatively small in size, the spawnery lies at the heart of a Pandoran lair. Huh. I wonder what we did to unlock that one. Brain Power Message from Citizen Stas, Sinedrion, to Public. This new Jericho Neural Tech we've been hearing about, it sounds like a pretty cool technology, really, but has anyone thought about how easily it might be abused by, uh, I don't know, an autocratic leader with delusions of grandeur? Wow. <laughs> Sanedrion, making waves right off the bat. I like how it was just an open letter to everyone, I guess. <laughs> All right, I think we're at a pretty good stopping point for now. Our soldiers are fully rested and healed, and we're ready to get back to exploring. We'll hit the pause button for now, but we'll pick up here next time, as we, hopefully, make contact with Sinedrion. Someone has to keep them out of trouble. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Phoenix Point, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, 
the official Discord server, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, the development roadmap, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Fig. You can also get your hands on a copy of Backer Build 5 for yourself by pre-ordering the game on the official Snapshot Games web store. As always, links are in the description.